I know this, I know you guys all got things going on in your lives and this is part of your job, but I appreciate you guys' commitment to us and this program and our players. Um, Grant, happy uh, 88th birthday, belated. Um, you look you look younger than ever. Keep it up, keep it up. And um, Cassie, we're glad you're back. Our condolences with you and your family. Um, so great to have you back. We, we missed your gym. Um, photos from from last week or your car post gym photos so um but no thank you guys again obviously really big challenge this week excited uh for the opportunity um you know i i, I haven't played in these type midweek games probably since um when i was at western michigan you know many moons ago um so it's exciting you know you get you get a chance to kind of adapt your schedule a little bit um, you get a chance to refocus, um, so it's good. Obviously, a really good um, North Texas opponent that we are facing. Seems like every team we're about to face is starting to get really, really good just as we face them. Uh, I don't know if that's coincidence or the coach in me, but um, they did a really good job against Missouri last week. Um, their offense is starting to come together. I think their new quarterback, they had a quarterback get injured. The quarterback they have um, that is uh, coming in, I think they've found – some continuity and flow with their system for him. Um, defensively, I think these guys run to the ball. I think this probably be one of the fastest teams that we play as far as team speed. Um, they do a really good job on defense of running to the ball. Um, they're aggressive up front. Um, so it's going to be a challenge. Um, ultimately, um, it's going to come down to, to, to us being able to consistently execute. I know it sounds like coach speak, but Every game that we've had success in goes back to consistently executing. Every game that we've struggled in, every drive goes back to some type of uh, drive killer, whether that's a penalty, whether that is a turnover, whether that is a bad fit on defense, whether that's a missed tackle. Um, obviously, this past game, um, I, a win is a win, <laughs> and I will take it you know, any day. I'm probably as stressed out as I've ever been uh, for 60 minutes, but I'll take the win. Um, no, I do not think we can continue to play like that and win by any means, but I do think how we won the game um, says a lot for this program and where we are going. We won the game as a team. I told those guys before uh, we left the locker room, we got into this situation as a team, and we were going to have to get out of it as a team. Um, a couple of the players came up to me after the game and said, Coach, we're, we're, we're making progress because last year a lot of guys would have quit or a lot of guys would have checked out mentally. Um, that, that's encouraging as a coach, um, but that won't happen on my team. Um, I, I don't believe in that. I believe in fighting until the end. But I do think, um, especially for you guys that have seen the evolution of this, this team, the way we continue to fight says a lot. Um, says a lot about the players, um, says a lot about the coaches, says a lot about the progress that we're making. Um, obviously, um, the turnovers, I mean, have, have, have continued to be an issue. The discipline, um, the foolish penalties, um, probably two major penalties that take points off the board. Corey McCoy um, does a phenomenal job with the interception. Uh, one of our team rules or one of our team kind of guidelines is anytime you get an interception, you go down the near sideline. Why do you do that? You prevent crackbacks. Everybody knows where you're going, so they have a chance to block for you. When you cut back across the field, kind of like high school, you're, you're really playing against 21 other guys because nobody knows where you're going. Um, he went back across the field, did not score, um, and was frustrated that he did not score and spikes the ball. So now instead of having the ball on the four-yard line inside the five where our goal line offense this year has been really good, uh, we get the ball on the 16. Uh, we only get three points out of that drive. Um, we throw a bubble screen on third and six and um, to Evans. Evans scoots down the sideline, gets the first down, gets inside the five. We got a holding call, a miscommunication between the two receivers on who was blocking um, the slot defender. One receiver thought they were going to pin him. He didn't. Um, got a tug on the jersey, another turnover. Um, some of the interceptions, uh, we got to continue to be better. Um, Corey Gamage just happened to slip on the play. Um, obviously, receiver falls down, throws it right to the safety, um, and then miscommunication. Um, Willie Johnson decides to go outside the guy on the post instead of inside crossing his face. Um, so, again, just the discipline. Discipline in our route running, discipline in our throws. You know, some of those throws, we just got to be mindful. We can't, can't just assume that it's going to happen. We got to make sure we, we see it happen and progress through. Um, again, 
program philosophy. I got to get down the near sideline. He gets down the near sideline, probably walks in the end zone. Um, and then again, I can't allow an emotional outburst to, to happen in the middle of the play or at the end of a play that, that hurts the team. So all the things that we talked about, I thought our energy was better. I challenged the guys after the middle Tennessee game. I didn't think our energy was great. Um, so I thought our energy was better. Our energy was better all practice week. Um, but I thought we also lost focus on the details. Um, and I think ultimately that's what put us in the position we were in. Um, but I did. I walked in the huddle, and one of our things we talk about in this program is focus on the things you need to do to get the results you want. Don't focus on the results. So I tell them all the time, don't think about winning. Because when you think about winning, as soon as something goes wrong, all the times you didn't win comes back into your mind. So we don't think about winning. Think about doing the things that you need to do to get the results you want. What is that? Protecting the football, lining up the right way, not jumping off sides, being in the right gap, wrapping up on the tackle, running your feet, all the things that you need to do in order to get those results. So on the last drive, I went into the offense and I said, hey, look, whatever else has happened today, none of that matters. Let's focus on what we need to do to get the ball in the end zone on this drive. Whether we, you, know, you fell down, you shouldn't have fell down, you went across the phase, you didn't go across the phase, you should have threw it, none of that matters right now. The only thing that matters is focusing on what we need to do to get the ball in the end zone this drive. And, and we were able to do it. You know, Grant made some really big plays um, on a huge third and six. Um, Ali makes a great block on a blitz. Grant steps up. We had been working scramble drill in practice last week because we thought we'd missed some opportunities on scrambles. Um, he stepped up and scrambled a little bit and found Shadid on the sideline. A huge third and six play, which the very next play ended up being the, the, the um, touchdown to Willie. So um, I think we're making progress. Is it as fast as you know, I would want? No. Is it as fast as anybody else would want? No. But are we making progress? Yes. Um, do I see some positive? Yes. Do I see a lot of things we need to clean up? Absolutely. Um, so with that, I'll open up the questions. But you mentioned the, the drive killers, penalties, turnovers, things like that. As it relates to, to tempo, the tempo you guys are trying to run, it, it seems the last few weeks maybe that play number might be a little bit lower than, than what you guys would like to be at. Is, is there a correlation there between the two? Yeah, I, I, and I talked to, you know, to the offensive staff about it. I think we've gotten a little bit um, cautious you know, as coaches. You know, it's, it's, it's hard when you're trying to say, okay, what play can we call where we won't fumble and we won't throw an interception? It's hard, you know, and trying to make sure we put the guys in the best position. Um, it's hard to play with tempo when you jump off sides and it's first and 15. You know, now you're trying to give the guys a chance to manage the situation rather than just ripping off plays. You know, in the, early in the season, we didn't have the drive killer. So we were first play at a Navy game with 40 yards. Yeah, you can go tempo. You know, we had a good rhythm. Um, but as coaches, when you don't have that rhythm, um, it's our responsibility to try to get the guys at least in a comfortable executing position. Um, so, yeah, we've probably you know, been a little cautious. I wouldn't say drastically, but we've been a little cautious. I mean, as coaches, I mean, when, when you call a play and you're saying, please don't fumble, it, it's tough. You know, when you, when you call a play and you're saying, you know, please don't throw an interception. Please don't have a tip ball. Please don't fall down on the route. It, it's, it's, it's tough. Um, how do we work through that? I think we got to get a little bit better on first down efficiency um, because usually if you can get good yardage on first down, it kind of helps everything kind of get started. Um, I think we've got to be a little bit more um, selective on, you know, the amount of guys we're playing, rotating when and, you know, and how to try to keep a little bit of the rhythm. Um, but, yeah, I, I would agree with that. We've, we've probably – our play count has probably went down because we were probably – you know, I, I think the rain probably had a little bit to do with that. You're not going to run as many plays. But I think over the last few weeks, you're probably right. Um, but you're, you're trying to say, okay, <laughs> what play can we call here where everything's going to go right, which it's just – that's tough to do. Does that make sense? But as a coach, you don't want to just put your players in bad positions. So you're trying to – put your players in the best possible position. And, and I don't think you can do that. I don't think I can ask Tim Cramsey or Lance to call the perfect play. It's not, it's not realistic. Um, you know, the, the players have got to execute. We've got to put them in the best possible position. But you, you can't call a play and say, well, what play are we going to call that he won't fumble at? That, that's unrealistic. You know, what play are we going to call that a guy won't miss a tackle? 
that's that's unrealistic, you know. But I think as humans, as coaches, we've tried to manage the situations we've been in and probably have been, you know, a little bit slower in process than, than we'd love to be, if that makes sense. Coach, in a general sense, um, with what Grant did there on those last two drives, um, is that kind of an aha moment? Uh, you had, you had his chances, and your offense did against East Carolina and Appalachian. You didn't quite make those plays, but you did the other day. Is that uh, what do you see from your offense to, up to say, hey, we can go do this when we have to? Yeah, I, I think I think I think they got confidence. I think they have that. What we don't have right now in our offense is rhythm. That that's what we're missing. Um, you, you think about it, the one we hit Willie on, that's a big play, the big post. Well, it gets called back because, you know, the, they say the guard, which I've never heard, but they say the guard is off the ball. So that play gets called back. So, no, again, no rhythm. Um, you know, I think when we have rhythm, I think we, we, we move the ball with, 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 with consistency. Um, our issues come when we don't have rhythm. You know, you get a false start. We get a guy that's not on the line or a guy covering up a guy. Um, we throw the ball down to, you know, Corey and they call the push off, you know. So I, I think our issue has not been confidence, um, but it's been rhythm. And I think on that last drive, if you look at it, we had rhythm. He stepped up, he found Shadi. The very next play, he stepped up, threw it to Willie. It's rhythm, you know. And, and when you run an up-tempo offense, rhythm is what you need. Um, you know, Middle Tennessee, when we had the ball rolling, we're rolling, we're rolling, we're rolling. Turnover. Well, there's no rhythm. You know, but when you when you can get a rhythm and you can eliminate the drive killers, I think we got a chance to really get it rolling. Coach, you alluded to the quarterback play of uh, North Texas earlier. They, they get a, a kid in his first start. He has a pretty good performance. Uh, what can you say about him? And, and it always kind of feels like now Marshall's always facing the new kid on the block with the quarterback. Yeah, I think they're hiding these guys until uh, until Marshall comes, and they come out and they look like you know. Uh, Dan Marino. Uh, but, no, I, I think um, this quarterback, I think he's mature, obviously his age. But I think when you go through that process of baseball player back to college, I think you have a different maturity. Um, and I think you can see that in his play. You know, he he's, he's, he's seems to be a good decision maker. Obviously, I'm not calling the plays or the, the reads. But, you know, he seems to have good decision making. He knows when to tuck it and run it. He's athletic. Um, he can run. Um, so, you know, there's been some plays where he's pulled it down and created some plays with his feet. Um, he's got a good, strong arm. You know, he seems to have good command of the offense. Um, so it's going to be a challenge for us. I think we got to do a really good job um, of, you know, rush lane contain, you know, on, on the guy and keeping him in the pocket and not getting sack happy and just trying to go get a sack and giving up contain or giving up a lane in the middle. Um, and then I think we're going to have to do a really good job <clears throat> against their tight ends. You know, I think they're going to be a matchup issue just by size and athleticism. Um, and it seems to be that's kind of their – they've done a good job running the ball and they've been able to get the ball to the tight ends to kind of keep their offense rolling. You mentioned the rushing attack for them. How, how big has their offensive line been toward that – running game and the success that they've seen or is it more the running backs vision because it seems like they've been pretty consistent as far as running the ball 170 to 220 yards each game yeah I think uh, if I'm correct I think he's leading the the conference for sure in rushing um, you know but per per game um, I, I think I want I think they've got really good running backs um, I think they got a good feel for the system um, but I think their system flows really well. You know, it's forcing you to play the RPO. It's forcing you to manage how you leverage the tight ends. Um, and then I think they do a really good job of getting on blocks, you know. Um, and, and then when you got good backs, they find that seam and they can hit that next gear. Um, so it's going to be big for us to have really good gap discipline. Um, it's going to be big for us to tackle well. Um, and it's going to be big for us to play the next play because what you'll see sometimes um, they'll go two or three plays and they'll get stuff and then they'll spit one out. Um, so you got to kind of play the next play because just because you know they got stuff once or twice doesn't mean that hey we fixed it we got it they're they're shut down. I think they do a good job of sticking to their plan and it ultimately allows them to be successful. Coach, you were talking about you know you guys kind of struggling with discipline and stuff, and I remember at the towards the end of fall camp you did mention you were concerned about you know discipline and stuff like that. So. How do you fix something like that? Well, I think it's 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 a couple things. Um, one, I think you got to continue to point out where those issues are coming from. 
Um, some of those are emotional controllable. You know, you, you got to control your emotions. Some of those are technique, fundamental controllable. If you're holding, there is a technique or a fundamental improvement that you can do. You got to run your feet. You got to get in better position, those types of things. Um, if you're not lining up on the ball at receiver or you know, O-line, that's a focus issue. So I think you have to address each level. And when I say discipline, to me, it all goes together, but there's different levels. Um, I think you got to address each level. Um, ultimately, big picture, what you have to do is you have to create competition to force players to focus. So if you don't do what you're supposed to do, when you're supposed to do it, the way it's supposed to be done, you don't play. Right now, we have that at some positions. We got to continue to develop and recruit that at all positions so that when you don't do what you're supposed to do, we can replace you to remind you without hurting the team. So you, as the head coach, you can't just say, hey, you know, you stepped on the line, you're out, we're going to play an O-lineman at wide out just so we can prove our point. That's not, that's not what a head coach is supposed to do. A head coach is supposed to give everybody the opportunity to be successful. Well, the way you do that, until you can develop or create or recruit enough talent for truly talent competition at each position. What you have to do is you have to continue to teach. So you have to use teaching moments. So do I think Corey McCoy woke up Saturday and said, you know what, when I pick that ball off, I'm going to spike it? No. What I think happened is in the moment, he lost focus on where he should have went and his emotional reaction to not scoring a touchdown because he wanted to please, he wants to score a touchdown, he wants to you know, make the fans happy, he wants to get in the end zone, his emotional response was frustration. So how do you do that? you got to bring him back and understand, hey, you won't have that frustration response if you go down the near sideline and do what you're supposed to do. Okay? Well, how do you talk about holding? You know, well, Shadi got called for the holding. Okay, Shadi, in practice, you have to run your feet because when your hands get outside the framework of your body, they're going to call you for holding. So what do we do? We work drills on getting outside, getting outside. So those are the things to me in the near future that you do to fix them. In the long term, you got to create enough competition in your program that forces guys, when they step on the field, to do what they're supposed to do the way it's supposed to be done. Coach, you, you mentioned um, you know, the, the play calling and being cautious due to the, the turnovers, mistakes, and whatnot. How, how fine of a line for that is it for you all within your meetings? Because you want to be aggressive on both sides of the ball, yet at the same time you don't want to do something that, that can put you in adverse situations and, and you know sort of perpetuate the problems you've had. Yeah, well, I, I don't think there's necessarily a change in philosophy or in meetings, but it's a different play call when it's first and 15 than when it's first and 10. It's a different play call when it's second and 12 than when it's second and six. So obviously when it's first and 15, you don't just want to chuck the ball up and make it second and 15. You know what I mean? So we are a shot offense. You know, we want to take shots. We want to have big plays. We want to throw the ball. We want to run the ball. Well, when you limit yourself with penalties, issues, turnovers, you have to be mindful in when to call those plays. It's not like we're saying, okay, hey, let's get rid of all the shot plays and let's not call those. But I'm not going to call – no one's going to fall for a play-action deep ball on first and 15. Why, why would you? I mean, you shouldn't do that. Um, you know what I mean? So that changes your philosophy a little bit. Now, you get second and seven. Second and six, you may be able to get a play action ball over the middle, or you may be able to run it on first and you know on first and ten, or you may be able to run it on second and eight and you know and get five or six yards. So to me, it's not really a change in philosophy; it's more of a change the situation. You got to coach the situation. Now, I we could chuck it up on first and fifteen. You guys would just write some story about how crazy I am, but. Uh, I, I would choose not to do that. Why? Because that doesn't give us a chance to be successful. Um, so, there, there, so it's more of a managing the situation rather than being cautious. That makes it like we're not taking plays out, but we're managing the situation. Um, you know, same thing defensively. You know, we, we could say, okay, well, you know, we're going to blitz every play. But if we can't play gap defense in our base, what, what makes us think we're going to be able to do it in the blitz? You know what I mean? So it's more of a not necessarily a change in philosophy, but when do we do certain things versus doing them or not doing them, if that makes sense. Coach, 
Willie Johnson obviously had the big catch for the touchdown at the, uh, the end of the game Saturday. He's a, one of the veteran guys in that receiving group. Just tell me about what he brings to the table as far as being a leader amongst that group and, and how you guys go forward with him like that. Yeah, I, I think, you know, Willie's done a really good job. He's been here a while. You know, he's one of the guys who, who creates a lot of um, athletic advantages for us. He's a guy who can run. He can catch. Um, he's got to continue to work on his route consistency. You know, I think sometimes when you have a fast guy, they think fast is the answer, uh, which is typical. Um, but Willie's a guy that's been here, you know, been here a while. He's been through the ups. He's been through the downs. You know, he's had some injuries. He's battled back. Um, I think he's doing a really good job this year of, of managing his role. You know, I think he can continue to improve um, like we all can. Um, I think his role will continue to get bigger the more consistent he gets because he does possess some really good skills. Um, and I think he gives us the ability to uh, move some pieces around, you know, because he can play multiple positions. He can play outside. He can play inside. Um, so he gives us that ability um, to be creative. From a run defense standpoint, um, it seems like the run defense is playing pretty well for the majority of the game. Then you look up and a kid like Watson from ODU has 160 some yards. Uh, three or four of those runs accounting for the majority of it. How do you how do you get back to you know? Is it just a fundamental thing? Is it just basics uh, as far as eliminating those big plays? Yeah, I mean it's, it's it goes back to discipline. You know, you, we call a defense and you got the B gap. Every time we call that defense, and then the fifth time we call it, you decide that you're going to look over into the A gap, and it comes out. And I think that's what you're seeing. You're, you're, we're, we're playing consistent football um, in spurts, and I think what's happening is in those spurts we're seeing some big plays. Now, don't get me wrong. You, you're going to have some, some – some offense is going to make some plays. They're on scholarship too. They scout. They, they have a plan. Um, but what we've got to do, we've got to eliminate the big plays. You know, if the thing gets out for eight yards, okay, great. What we can't have it do is get out for 32 yards or get out for a touchdown. But that's what it comes back to. It's the discipline to execute the call over and over and over. Very few times in those type plays, especially in last game, was it just somebody blocked our guy completely out of the gap and then they ran the ball in that gap. Um, it was more of a combination of, we had a guy responsible for that gap, but he saw another gap open, so he was a little bit farther. Now there goes the ball inside of me. Instead of trusting, hey, I've got the B gap. I know somebody else is responsible for the A gap. I'm going to be in the B gap, and if the ball goes through the A gap, that's on the other person. Um, but that's what's happened. And it's not a – I don't, I don't want to paint the picture of a um, uh, reluctant or what's the best word – um, defiant football team. It's guys wanting to make plays. You know, like I said, Corey McCoy didn't think, well, I'm going to slam this ball to make Coach Huff mad at me. You know, the linebackers aren't saying, you know what, I'm going to the A-gap because that's what I want to do. These guys are out there trying to make plays and are trying to be aggressive. With those things, we just have to be disciplined in our aggressiveness. Anything else? No, we're good. I'm good. We're all good. Good. Well, I appreciate you guys again. Uh, looking forward to seeing all you guys down um, in Denton, Texas um, this Friday. Um, I, I'm honestly excited. I think it's going to be a really good opportunity. I think, um, you know, our guys are excited. Uh, we've had a couple of good days of practice. Hopefully we'll have another one today. Um, but, again, I, I thank you guys for, for everything you do. I know you guys um, – enjoy doing it but i appreciate you guys our players appreciate your coverage um so see you guys on friday night and uh go hurt <laughs>